Hey y'all. So it's finally happening. We are doing the plant tour and it's going to be a long one. I did a rough count and there are over 400 plants in this house. So I will try to get through them as quickly as I can. My Latin is not that great and I will likely pronounce some things wrong. I've been collecting plants for about 10 years now. It all started with my dad growing up and gardening. Um, alrighty, let's start in the plant room. So there's the wall, we'll get to that in a second. Let's first focus over here, if this will cooperate with me, on this wall. Um, there we go. So here is a philodendron Jose Buono. Horrible time to take this video because I had just, just chopped this guy. Uh, it was big and beautiful, filling this entire pole, um, but I did just kind of chop it down. Don't be alarmed, it is growing back. Got new growth points there and there. And over in the corner, this is a Monstera. I'm going to butcher this name, just full warning, Borgesiana. That's, that's my best guess right there. This was a plant I got from my very good friend, Justin Hancock. It was variegated, um, but it has reverted which is fine. I, I don't mind. It's actually a very, very pretty plant, even without the variegation. So that's what this guy is here. Going down, this is a philodendron plaumanii silver cloud. Again, please don't say anything about the pronunciation. Total disclaimer there. Uh, this was a giant plant, just like the Jose Buono, but just like the Jose Buono, it had run out of space to grow. So I did get this one, the old chopperoo, and I pretty much just direct stuck it in this pot to root it because I'm very reckless like that. Um, hence the yellowing on the edges of this leaf. This was the original leaf that I chopped from the mother plant, so it did get a little bit stressed out. But that new growth coming in tells me it's probably rooted. Honestly, I'm a little bit too scared to try to tip it out because it's it's a pretty big pot. So we'll just we'll just go with it. I bet it's rooted. Over in the corner, theme of the day is Michelle recently chopped all of her plants. Um, spring fever hit me pretty hard. This was a giant gloriosum. Um, it's still pretty good. It's, you know, it's still holding in there pretty strong, but it, it doesn't really give it a lot of, it doesn't do it justice. It was very beautiful beforehand before I came at it with a pair of scissors. Here you can see it's starting to pop out new growth, um, two new growth points actually. So this guy is off and running again. Again, I had to chop it. It ran out of space to grow in the pot. If I was, if I was thinking, um, I would pot all of my crawlers into square pots um, so that they had more room to kind of crawl and run. But add it to the list of things. Maybe I'll do it one day. I do want to talk really quickly about this pot before I move on. Um, this is a fabric pot. I really like growing in the fabric pot, see if we can get a better look at it. It's pretty dirty down there. There's a lot of dirt in here. But I do like growing in fabric pots um, because it really does help with managing your watering. Terracotta tend to kind of dry out a little bit more. Um, there's a lot of water loss through this container. And then on the other hand, plastic tends to hold water um, a lot more than the others. So I found a really good medium ground with these cloth pots, especially for the big guys. Cloth pots work very well for me. Moving over here, uh, this is going to be really hard to get a good visualization of, um, but this is a philodendron squamiferum. Uh, very pretty plant. I got this as a gift from a local plant friend. You can see here the little hairy stem. It's really cute. Um, and I really like climbers uh, because I'm very limited on space here. I need to start a GoFundMe page for a greenhouse. But as of right now, I've got limited space. And I do like the crawlers, number one, because the leaves get huge as they crawl up walls or poles or whatever it may be. And number two, it saves me a lot of space. So I can really maximize the number of plants I have in the small amount of space I have. So there's that guy, Squamiferum. All right, it's time. It's plant wall time. So before I talk about the plant wall, I wanna talk about the logic behind why I built a plant wall. Um, 
pretty simply, I really don't like totem poles. I had a bunch of these growing on their own individual totem poles. I would rather have all of my plants crawling up a wall in one spot than a bunch of different totem poles around. So it's just my preference. Um, I like to shove everything in one spot and let it go wild. I just wanted to make a wall. And then this wall became full and I ran, I wanted to make another wall. So I made another wall. I really like plant moss walls. Um, well, let's hop right in. So first plant here, um, this is a philodendron mayoi or Tahiti. Um, both, I call it both the same. I mean, I like it, but I like this guy more. So this is a philodendron Milano chrysum. This coppery leaf here is how it gets its name, Milano, copper. When the new leaves come out, they have that nice coppery sheen to them. I'm very excited about this plant. Uh, I have had it for quite a while, but I've never been so excited as I am right now because growing up this wall, the leaves are getting bigger. And if you Google a photo of Milano Chrysum mature leaves, they are just completely different looking than this. They're very beautiful. So if you can see, we've got some progress here. Um, this was the size of the leaf that it started with, give or take. And now you can see, well, we'll go to this one. This guy here is bigger. Um, and I'm hoping when this guy hardens off, he's even bigger than that guy. Because that's how it's been going. So wish me luck. Next up. Philodendron Silver Sword. Uh, this guy is really pretty and unique on this wall because it's silver. And you can see that it's got this little kind of sword-like appearance to it. The more mature it gets, the more sword-like it's going to look. Make sure I don't skip anything. All right, we'll hop over to the Silta Pecana next. Um, this guy is pretty impressive. I was kind of bored with this, but it's... It's definitely kind of made a comeback because this guy is very aggressive growing up the wall all the way to the top of the wall. This is the second time it's reached the top of the wall. This is a very fast grower. And as I mentioned, with the leaves getting bigger, you can see here, this leaf comparatively, it's pretty small. Um, and notice that there's no holes. Also this kind of silvery look to it. But just for fun, grew it up a wall. And as it started to grow up the wall, it got bigger, just like the rest of the plants. But it also developed these little fenestrations or these little holes in them. All the way up to what it looks like now. So you can see this leaf is significantly larger. Unfortunately, it also has lost its nice silver coloration. So as it gets more mature, it, it does lose that. So that is the Monstera Siltipicana. She's reached the top, she's got nowhere else to go. So just like half the plants in this room, she will be getting the top soon. Next up, I'm gonna butcher this name again. Here we are again, Monstera Borgiana. Please just put a caption over that. Um, Elbow. So this one is variegated. Um, remember the one in the corner, that big guy I got from Justin did revert. Um, but this miraculously kept its coloration. Uh, so this, is showing a lot of that white on there and the timing of this is really actually quite perfect unlike the rest of the stuff because a new leaf just emerged isn't she cute so i've tried this plant this is the fourth time i tried this plant um, every single time i just had horrible luck with them and they just reverted on me but fourth time's charm i guess so monstera blah, blah, blah. Elbow. Okay. Well, we're on a Monstera kick. Let's just let's just knock out the rest of the Monsteras on here. Um, this here again, hungry. Don't know why. Is a Monstera pinatipartita. Maybe I should check my pH. I'm gonna check my pH. Um, so this guy here, Monstera pinatipartita. Again, just kind of growing on the wall. This is a very good totem pole grower or wall grower. Uh, I haven't had to help this guy latch onto the wall pretty much since I started it. It is very aggressive at setting roots into the, into the wall. So if you want to try out growing a plant vertically, this is a great one to start with because it's, it doesn't really need any of your help. Um, as the leaves get older, they do fenestrate. I was hoping for more fenestrations because it's pretty old now, but it just keeps, keeps those two or three cuts there. 
And in the theme of Monsteras, oh, my favorite one that I have right now. Probably my favorite one. Sorry, Elbow. I just, this one's way cooler. Ta-da! This beautiful uh, Monstera Escalito. I love this thing. This was on my wish list for a very, very long time. Ever since I saw a photo of a guy on Instagram with this Monstera leaf that was literally the size of him. And it was just very big fenestration, super holy, just a magnificent looking thing. So I got this from a friend. We did a plant swap and she gave me this plant a couple of years ago. And I honestly, I'm, I'm not going to lie, I was in the middle of moving and painting the house and a lot of, a lot of things happening at once. And I kind of neglected this for a while. But as soon as I gave it some love um, and put it on the wall, it has not disappointed. This is a very aggressive grower. Giant leaves, like just giant leaves. Let me see if I can. That's my hand. That's the size of that leaf. It's amazing. And it's not even mature yet. It's still getting bigger as it goes. So... Big fan of the Monstera Escalito right there. Love that plant. And I'll just hop over to the rest of the Monsteras while we're on a Monstera kick. Um, the last one is right here. And I had to look for it. Uh, have you guys ever lost plants in your place? Because uh, I do that a lot. I like lose plants. I don't know where they go. And then I kind of find them a couple of weeks later. Oh, that's where you were. Okay. Last but not least. Um, well, actually, second to last but not least, uh, this is a Monstera Velvet Shingler. I got this from Brian's Botanicals a couple of years ago. It, it's called a, a Velvet Shingler. Um, I have seen a lot of people calling it Monstera Dubia Green Form Velvet Shingler, which is a very long name. But essentially, it's a shingling plant, meaning it will latch on and grow up a wall and eventually when it really latches on the leaves will get pretty flat and it has this like super cool painted on kind of look when it latches onto a wall so that's that super tiny leaves down there i don't know if you can see them but that's what they started like and that's what they're like now pretty cool plant and then we've got its cousin we've got its cousin over here in the corner um, this is the Monstera Dubia. Uh, you can tell the difference. I've got both of them together side by side. The green form or velvet shingler, whatever you want to call it. And then this guy here, uh, this is a Dubia. It's got those silver colors in it. And again, just like the rest of the plants, you can see as it's growing up the wall, it, the leaves are getting bigger, which is awesome because it's my favorite thing. Um, one thing to note, <laughs> I did, I do love shinglers so much um but i've noticed that they they kind of look better when they grow on a flat surface instead of the moss wall so because i've had so many plants in the past ruin my walls with their roots i created a shingler corner over here uh these are just two pieces of plywood i painted white just to protect the wall from their roots that they are finally sending out and latching to the wall one more Monstera over here before we wrap up. Well, two more Monsteras. I lied. I have a lot of Monsteras. This guy here is was on my wish list for a very long time. Um, they used to be really expensive. But recently, they've come way down in price. Um, and they've gotten to the point where you can like reasonably buy one. It's no longer thousands and thousands of dollars. This is a Monstera Obliqua. Uh, Peru and I really like this plant because of those very severe and dramatic fenestrations those big old holes on them um, this is just a very pretty monstera I haven't seen another one that looks like this yet monstera obliqua Peru the idea is to have it grow up the wall but I don't know all right and last but not least I'm not going to talk too much about this one um <laughs> I'm sure everybody knows what this is. This is a Monstera Thai constellation. Um, got this actually from a guy, a friend of mine in Florida when I was living there. He traveled a lot to Thailand and he actually had brought one of these back way before they became popular. Like he did like way before. We're talking like a decade before they became popular. And um, for a very long time, ever since I'd 
you know, lived in Florida and I'd been visiting his property, I asked him, like, are you ever going to cut that up? Can I have a piece? And finally, finally, um, one time he said yes. And he gave me like a tiny one little leaf cutting. Um, and I, I flew with it on the airplane, had it in my lap the whole time. And now, well, now I've got a bunch of ties. So that's that. Not going to talk more about that one. We'll move on to my top five. I hate to say anything is my favorite plant because that changes every week. I have a different plant, a different favorite plant. This one's up there though. This one's been up there for a very long time. Both of these two have been up on my favorite list for a very long time. This guy here is a philodendron splendid. It is a cross between this puppy, which is a philodendron varicosum, and this guy right here, the philodendron melanocrysum. So this guy and this guy made a baby, and this is what it looks like. It's a very pretty plant. Again, a pretty aggressive grower up the wall. I really like the velvety leaves, especially in the new ones when they come out and they have that nice melanochrysum coppery tone to them. Now that it's summer and it's really warm in here, um, I imagine he'll grow even faster. So that's that new leaf. Take a look at the, the mature, the hardened off leaf. That's what that guy looks like. And then over here, this, as I had mentioned, is the philodendron varicosum. Uh, really cool thing about this plant. Do you see that little fuzzy pedial? That little fuzzy bit right there. Um, and then if you look at it from the back, it's got a bunch of red markations in between the veins. It's, it's very pretty. This is a philodendron varicosum red back. This has been a plant that has given me a lot of joy. I was searching for this plant for a couple of years back when I started my collection. I would guess I started it in like 2016, 2017. I was looking for this plant and in the beginning it was really difficult to find this plant. Um, now it's not as difficult to find it. But back then uh, I went to a Fairchild Spring Fair with Justin Hancock, my plant friend. And um, there was a lady there who was selling the varicosums and I just jumped on it. I remember I had, I had Justin guard the varicosum for me while I ran to the ATM machine because I didn't bring cash. I don't know what I was thinking, but I ran to the, ven or the uh, ATM machine to get cash for this thing and I had Justin kind of hold it for me uh, while I was going to get money. So from day one, I guess I was a little crazy. Um, this guy is special. I have three of these actually growing on the wall. I have one, one, we'll just call that. Where's the second one? It's so hard to see them all. Two in there, and then my third one over here. So I do have three of these. Clearly, this is one of my favorites. I didn't really expect the leaves to get much bigger on this as it grew up the wall um, because there are there is a maximum point that leaves grow. I mean, they don't get like they don't just get bigger and bigger and bigger indefinitely. And this guy had already had pretty mature leaves, I thought. But this kind of made me question um, how much bigger these leaves could get. There's one, this is the one plant that's popping out giant leaves. The others are not for some reason, but this, one of the three plants is just massive leaves. So we will see if it gets bigger, uh, smaller, if it stays, it stays the same. I mean, I'd be happy if it stays the same because this is big. Okay. That's it for, oh, <laughs> No, pump fake. It's not it for this side of the wall. I always forget. I've got a plant buried back here. Actually, let me. There we go. Um, <laughs> I always forget about this guy. This is a um, Raphidophora cryptantha. Almost blanked on the name there. And originally, when I put this wall together, this was the plant that was outgrowing all of the other plants. Just like the Monstera dubia and the Velvet Shingler. This is also a shingling plant, um, and this is a very good example of what it looks like when it truly shingles on a wall. It gets super flat. The leaves get closer together. There's not as much space between these leaves, um, and it takes on like an artwork appearance. It just gets super flat to the wall. So again, Raphidophora cryptantha, I haven't forgotten about you. I know you're back there, and uh, I hope 
that you make an appearance again one day. Maybe you'll uh, take back first place in growing. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, so there's two plants here. This is a philodendron brandiatum. Uh, again, this is this is one of those plants that I was like, oh, we'll see what happens. I'm not... Sorry for any of you Brandiatum fans out there. I was not a huge fan of this plant. Um, it was kind of weedy. I had a really hard time kind of keeping it tame. Um, but now that I've got one of them that latched onto the wall, I, I'm kind of curious to see what happens the older and bigger it gets. This next guy down here is a philodendron Burl Marx fantasy. Um, Burl Marx was... <laughs> I really should have done my research before this. Um, he was a horticulturist. Um, basically grew a lot of plants. And he had this plant growing in his garden. And the really cool thing about this is this was the only occurrence of this plant. And, you know, they had found it in his garden. They've propagated it. And now people have passed it around. It's being sold. And... Now, it's a really cool story. This went from one plant in one person's garden to a bunch of plants everywhere. And I just think that's a really cool story because I know that there's, there's you know, some, some concerns with plant poaching and things like that. But this is a really, really cute, endearing story about how one plant turned into thousands. Pasazanum. The leaves get giant on this thing. And I like how simple it looks. It kind of reminds me of cabbage, which is odd. Um, but it is really pretty with that light white vein right down the middle. Here are the remnants of the Gloriosum that I had chopped up. It was a very beautiful plant, very big leaves, um, but it just ran out of space. So I had to give it the chop. So here are the Gloriosum babies that I chopped from the big guy. Um, here's another one. Let me see. Again, that yellowing. I um, I just chop them and plop them right in soil. Um, I really don't baby these guys too much. And they seem to do okay with that. But it does cause the leaves to kind of yellow a little bit in the beginning. Let me see. I'm just trying to show you proof that they don't hate it. So that's a new growth coming out right there. So, ta-da! It is alive. We're on the other side of the wall now. We've jumped walls. Syngonium podophyllum variegata albo. Some of these plants have very long names. Um, it is, you know, like the word says, a variegated syngonium. This guy's kind of funny. I had a giant syngonium plant. Um, found that with Justin, too. Find a lot of cool things when I'm hanging out with Justin. And the really cool thing about this particular guy is that every other leaf that he spits out is completely white, which isn't great. You don't want a lot of white leaves because there's no photosynthesis going on there. They're pretty much just dead weight. Um, and oftentimes they don't really survive that long. They kind of tend to crinkle up and get brown. So, I mean, you don't really want a lot, of, a lot of pure white leaves. But this guy, every other leaf it pops out is white. I don't know why. At least I can say it has very strong variegation. But that's that guy. Philodendron elegans. Um, this is a young elegans. I hope. I do question this. Um, I won't, I don't really know. It came to me as an elegans, but now I'm kind of questioning if it is or is not. Elegans have very severely cut leaves, um, and they look very pointy when they mature. So it's hard to tell. This one's pretty new. I got this guy at the same time as this from the same local plant friend. So we will see what it turns into, but that's philodendron elegans. Down here, <laughs> buried, already buried in this brand new wall. Uh, this is a philodendron paraiso verde. And it, I got it from a local girl here in Asheville. It's got these beautiful little froggy kind of looking finis or, um, variegation on it. So you can see in the light like that. So I was super excited. This plant took a very long time. I got it very lightly rooted. Um, so I had to root it for a while before I put it in this pot. And I'm a little bit scared that it reverted. You can see this new growth coming out doesn't have those little splashes on it. So 
Fingers crossed. We'll see. Time will tell. Next up, um, Epiprenum Skeleton Key. Basically like a pothos um, skeleton key. And it doesn't look very skeleton-y right now uh, because I've had this plant in a basket for a few years. Um, I got this when I got the varicosum with uh, Justin at the plant fair in Fairchild. And um, I honestly, I haven't done this plant justice. I've kind of put it in a pot and ignored it. But recently I was inspired. I had a little bit of extra space on the plant wall, so I threw her in here. And maybe um, we can put a video on here or a, a, a screenshot of a mature skeleton key leaf. But when they get older, they do look like like really cool old skeleton keys, like cut out leaves. It kind of looks like a caterpillar or a bug, whatever, insect, chewed the bottom of the leaf and just left the top hole. When they get older, they're really cool looking. Up next is another a disappointment in Michelle's plant collection. Um, this was, still kind of is, a variegated Adansonii, but just like with the Albo, the Monstera Borgiana, whatever you want to say it, Albo, this guy is also reverted. I tried to re-revert it by cutting it and chopping it. Um, sometimes that can help kind of jumpstart the, the variegation again. And I was hopeful because you see that guy did, but it, it looks like it's gone already. So this is not a very stable plant. Um, but that's what that was. I had high hopes for it. I'm kind of giving up. We've already gone over the obliqua. Such a cool plant. Here is, yep, there we go. A philodendron strawberry shake. Um, I got this from a local plant friend. Um, a lot of my local friends are plant people. Go figure. And I uh, got this from her. And, you know, I, I, honestly, I was kind of like, oh, all right, fine, I'll get it. I don't, it wasn't huge on my wish list, but it has definitely impressed me with those different colored variegations on the leaves. So, philodendron, strawberry shake. And last but not least on the wall is a pretty, I think a lot of people probably know this one. This is a philodendron micans. Typically you see these in hanging baskets kind of trailing down. But again, I kind of wanted to see what it would look like with bigger leaves. So, started this a little while ago and to be determined what it turns into when it gets mature. So far, this guy is growing faster than any of the others. So, it's looking pretty optimistic for him. Okay. That was the plant wall. Walls. I guess we'll move on now to the shelf. We're going to start with this big boy. Um, <laughs> this video does not do it justice. Uh, this is, there we go. This is an Anthurium Faustino's Giant. I have no idea where I got this. I think I got this at Fairchild a few years back. This is a giant plant. Um, and every leaf that comes out is just bigger and bigger. Super cool Anthurium. Um, just make sure if you get this that you have a lot of space for it. Definitely time to repot this big boy. It has been in this pot pretty much since I got it years ago. Um, I'm a little bit afraid to see ooh, what it looks like. I may have to smash this pot with a hammer to get this plant out. All right, we'll hop through all the plants on the bottom shelf <laughs> real quickly, hopefully. Uh, Philodendron Gloriosum, we've seen him before. This is a little version of the big guy cut over there. One of its many, 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 many offspring. This is an Anthurium Chamberlanii or Chamberlanii. Again, pronunciation Latin is not my thing. Uh, this is a really cool Anthurium. I'm glad I bought it. Uh, over here in the corner, uh, is an Anthurium crystallinum. I'm not going to be able to get really good uh, photos of these individual plants because everyone is kind of crammed in here, but I will do my best. Anthurium crystallinum, which is different than the, oh my goodness, Anthurium clarinervium here. Over in the corner, uh, there we go. 
This is a philodendron ring of fire. Uh, it is, you know, another variegated philodendron. Got various colors on it. It's got that reddish look and the white to it. So that is the ring of fire. Okay, so let's get cracking. Middle shelf time. The Goldilocks shelf. Not too big, not too small. First up is, I'm going to botch the name on this one. I think everybody does though, in my, in, to be fair. This is a philodendron wurzelixii. It's my best guess. Um, it, this is immature right now. It doesn't have its fenestrated leaves, but as it gets older, just like the elegans, it gets those really big, severe cuts in the leaves. It's really pretty. Um, but this is a young pup right here. This, you know, and the topic of hybrid anthuriums, this is a mystery. Um, it came as an ace of spades from Indonesia, but I think it is definitely an ace hybrid. The question is, what is it hybridized with? Um, my best guess is a magnificum because as these leaves grow and as this plant gets larger, the leaves get massive. So I think my best guess, an ace of spades magnificum hybrid right here. But with anthuriums, I mean, who can tell anymore? Okay, over here, this is an alocasia nebula. Looks like that new leaf came out a little, a little, a little weird right there. Uh, this I thought was dead. I had given up on this plant. Um, and then all of a sudden, like, like a little daisy in the spring, it popped out of the soil. And here it is. So this here, um, this is an Anthurium radicans dressleri. Again, probably botched the name. Um, this is another plant that's kind of gone in and out of being happy and unhappy. Uh, but it does have that really cool bumpy foliage on it. So, radicans dressleri. Here I've got a baby crystallinum. Isn't she so cute? I love those little plants. This is an Amnidrium silver. There you go. The guy, 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 I guess spit it out. That's what that is. And the leaves, as they get older, kind of cut more and develop more fenestrations, more holes in them. This is a fairly new plant. I, I mean, I've had it for a little while now, um, but not nearly as long as my other plants. Pretty excited to watch this one grow. It may go on the wall. <laughs> Another hard one to pronounce. Um, Sir Cestius Mirabilis. This I got from Indonesia not too long ago. This has been on my list of items that I have wanted for a very long time. And it is so pretty. I have zero regrets getting this plant. Um, my friend actually, she actually bought it for me. It was a gift. So thank you. It's really nice to have good plant friends. I'll just say... These are hopeful future plants. Um, fingers crossed that they root and they survive. I've got an El Choco in there. I've got a, I'm going to butcher the name on this. Um, Juopii, Jopii, uh, and a variegated Lechleriana, uh, Monstera Lechleriana variegated. I've got a couple of um, Luxurians in there, Philodendron Luxurians in there. Um, I have an Anthurium luxuriant in there, which is very confusing when you first start a philodendron in an Anthurium luxurium. They're both pretty cool plants. Um, I've got more Clarinervium babies, um, and I also have um, Pothos barbarianus. Gonna have to put the name on there for that one. Um, that is one that my friend got from Indonesia, and um, we're both trying to see if we can finally get this one to root because it's been really difficult to root that plant. Um, I will kind of show you what that plant looks like. Come here. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Ta-da! That brown <laughs> plant right there. That is the very impossible pothos to root. If anybody has any ideas, want to tell me how to root this thing, I would appreciate it. Um, I do also have a an Anthurium clydemioides here. Um, this took months to root, and I honestly was very afraid it wouldn't make it, but it has finally rooted. This is a new leaf that I have popped out. It's working on another one. So I'm, I'm so scared of losing this plant because it's been months. I just won't take it out. I'm just going to leave it there until I'm confident that it won't die on me because that was a very hard one to root. Okay. And here we have 
the babies. Super exciting. Um, these are my little Claire Nervian babies that I put so much love into. Fun fact, um, when you pollinate anthuriums and you grow seeds, it takes about a year to get um, mature or seedlings, let's just say. Um, this These plants are very near and dear to me. Uh, there's a very special story behind these guys here. Uh, so here's a little baby Clarinervium. Story is, I decided to pollinate this plant um, right around the time I found out my sister was pregnant which was really cool. Um, so I pollinated it when I found out she was pregnant and it took the entire duration of her pregnancy, a human gestation period for these seeds to ripen on the flower to the point where I could harvest the seeds and plant them. And at that time, my sister gave birth to my niece, June. So this plant is about the same you know, this plant has followed my niece, June, pretty much step by step. It started at the same time she started, so to say. Um, and then I planted it and started growing it right about the time she, she kind of came out on this earth. So these are all very near and dear to me. Every single person in my family has one of these. I call them my little June plants. It is a little bit discouraging, though, to note that this took a very long time to grow this plant. Um, so if you want to try anthuriums and you want to try pollinating and doing seeds, uh, just make sure you're ready to wait a while before you get a plant. For the record, June, my niece, is way bigger than these plants are. She's growing much faster than they are. Okay, on the top of the stairs here is an Alocasia regal shields. I really like this plant. Very pretty plant because it's got those pretty um, dramatic veins on the back of its leaf. And it's got this like red hue to the back of the leaf. It's a cool, it's a cool alocasia. Hopefully it can remain spider mite free. Set the standard now. Um, pretty view. Okay. And then <laughs> we're just going to hop right back into all of it. This is a Raphidophora de Cursiva, mature form, a uh, very mature form. Another plant that Justin and I found together at like a little tiny jungle. Uh, we actually had to search for this one in the jungle. Um, probably needs water, but you can see the leaves on this are giant, about the size of, well, my arm, if I can fit my arm in there really big leaves, essentially. That's all we need to know. Just giant leaves on this guy. Over here, let me shift my ankle. So this is a Costaforms plant, which I got when they went, as soon as the uh, Costaforms online launched, this is the first plant I got. Um, this is one that I'd had my eye on for a few years. Uh, it is a Caladium or a Xanthosoma, whatever you want to call it, Lindenii. And, well, this guy is growing really well. I can't take all the credit. I did have <clears throat> somebody grow it for me um, most of the way. So I definitely cannot take all the credit on how much this one's grown. Um, but it is a really beautiful plant. And so far, pretty easy. So far. And then down here, uh, Calathea or Befolia. This is a plant that I had wanted for a while. I got it a couple of years ago. There's something so cool about those soft looking leaves. This I have, I am so sorry. I have, I have done this plant wrong. Um, this is a Scandapsis Moonlight. I was very excited for this plant. Again, another one I purchased right as soon as Costa La launched its online site. This is one that I like immediately purchased. I did it wrong um, because well, it got really big in the pot, um, and I didn't repot it for a while, for a very long while, and it got severely rootbound. I mean, I've never had a plant that got that rootbound before. So it's struggling a little bit, and that is completely on me. 
and not re- not repotting it soon enough. Um, it is worth noting the podcast episode where Jess and I talked about when to kind of tease out the roots. This was definitely a situation where I tried to tease out the roots um, because when I pulled it out of the pot, it was a brick of roots. And in that kind of situation, you do want to kind of tease them out. Um, so I do apologize, my moonlight. I hope you recover in your nice and roomy pot here. I don't really love this plant. Um, this is the only pole I have left. It is one of Michelle's oh, kind of ad hoc. Don't want to build a whole moss pole because I don't have enough moss moss poles. Um, I put wood behind it, moss in the front of it, fishing wire around, call it a day. This poor sucker here that I've shoved into a dark corner and kind of uh, just let him grow. If he still grows, just kind of forgotten about him. This is a philodendron Camposportianum. Um, I got this. Actually, it was misidentified um, from somebody as a Mykins, um, but it ended up being a Campo. Uh, the reason I know um, with certainty is because right now it does kind of look like a Mykins. It's got that velvety leaf to it, um, but as it grows up, and the leaves get larger, they actually lose this velvet and they they kind of get like an arrow shape to them for lack of a better lack of a better description. Um, and they turn from this like purplish to a green um, and they lose that velvety look. So right now this guy's pretty mature. I chopped him way down. This is another very aggressive grower. I've chopped him, he's reached the top of the pole, I would say at least five times now, and I've had to chop him back down. Very, very, very aggressive plant. And at this point, I'm just kind of shoved him over there and I'll, I'll deal with him later. First of all, hi cat. This is the spare bedroom and every single room in the house is filled with plants. Um, so we'll start here. Calathea rattlesnake. Love this plant. Um, if you can't tell, it's doing very, very well. I have given it a lot of tender love and care throughout the years. Had it for quite a few years now. Um, and this is just a plant that does not disappoint. Those leaves are just so pretty on this plant. Like all the other Calatheas, probably has a couple of spider mites hidden in there. I can't be sure. Um, but unlike the other Calatheas, this seems to be a little bit more durable than um, the others. Highly recommend this plant. Love this plant. Here is another Calathea, uh, which is very cool. It's in, really hard to show it in the video, but the texture of this is probably like the softest texture I've ever felt on a leaf. Um, it's very velvety, very fuzzy. Uh, this is called a Calathea or the Wixii, just like the philodendron, probably, pro probably pronouncing it wrong. Uh, very velvety leaves. Again, <laughs> just like the Orbifolia, this unfortunate soul was on the wrong side of the lawnmower um, when I could not get it to turn off. And I imagine that's why it's got all these brown edges here. So I, if I had a recommendation for Calatheas, don't put them next to a lawnmower with hot fumes that cannot shut off. Um, and also just don't ever remove them. Um, if they're growing, don't move them. They do not like change. All right. Over in this section here, I've got my little wall of bops or bird of paradise. I really like this plant. Um, they just are so easy and they're so pretty. Um, I think that they're really nice looking design plants for in a home. This guy's pretty funny. Um, these were all outdoors in the summer. They will likely go outdoors very soon. Um, but over the winter, this guy kind of shot up a new leaf. Like, hey, I'm an adult now. Um, so pretty cool. I like Bur Bird of Paradise, or Bops, as I call them. Um, this plant in the corner. Um, nobody leaves baby in the corner, but this guy is in the corner. It is okay that he is in the corner, though. This is a ponytail palm. Uh, very easy plant. Uh, this guy's actually pretty special because when I started at Costa Farms, oh gosh, eight years ago, um, this was my first plant. I remember we had an orientation 
where we spent a week or a couple of days um, going over, you know, what all the departments were at Costa and who is in the departments and a representative from each department would come and kind of talk to us about what the, they do, you know, because <laughs> there's a lot of departments. And uh, at the end of orientation, uh, we all got little plants. Um, they were bonsais. I chose this bonsai. I kind of knew that a ponytail palm would be a very durable plant, and I was not disappointed. It has done very well in eight years, especially considering the mealybug outbreak of 2018 that I had on these plants. Um, it has really done very well and again very sentimental my first ever plant from costa and basically like this plant is when i i got it when i started at costa eight years ago moving up okay we've got a little philodendron wall i'm not going to crawl in the bed and go over every one of these i'll just kind of point to them that is a philodendron brazil that is an epiprinum Panadon skeleton key, again, without the skeleton looks because I've thrown it in a pot and let it trail down for years. Uh, over there is a Pothos Manjula that is reverting right there. And then over there is another Pothos Manjula that is not reverting. So, yay. I've got a giant cactus in this room. Um, I really like giant cactus. And I want to say I love this plant, but when I was moving, um, this was a very difficult plant to move. It is taller than I am, um, and it is very unstable. It rocks a lot, and it's got some pretty severe spines on it. When I moved, I had to wrap this puppy up in newspaper, bubble wrap, and then cardboard. And still, somehow, through all of that, it stabbed me multiple times so i'm not i mean i love this plant but it will never move it will stay there for the rest of its life even though you can see let me see right here it is etiolating meaning it's not getting enough sun and it's getting really skinny right there it's just gonna have to deal with it because i just i'm so tired of getting stabbed by this plant love giant cacti hate getting stabbed by them uh and then last but not least over here this was a gift from a fellow Costafarmian, I guess we'll call us. Um, this is an Amazon lily that I got from Jose Maldonado because he knows I love plants. So she's still alive, Jose. Thank you. That's it for the guest bedroom plus cats. Oh, lies. I like cacti. I cannot tell you what any of these cacti are. I'm not a cacti expert, um, but I do like them and I like to collect them. However, <laughs> I do uh, neglect them. If you can see, I've got two that are currently hitting um, the ceiling. So I probably should have moved those a little while ago, um, but I didn't. I got a couple hundred plants. I can't, I can't, I can't be particular about all of them. Okay, we are done with the upstairs. Woohoo!